Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Tuesday, July 21st, 2020. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, years ago, videos are still up. I would start videos by saying that nothing I said in the sports betting video would net people as much money as betting on Bitcoin and silver, right? Um, people started leaving posts in the comment section saying, hey, the boxing starts one minute and 30 seconds into the video. Well, let me just say this. The silver renaissance is happening right now. It's still early. I would encourage people to consider Bitcoin, gold, dash, and silver. Let me also add another uh, comment. Horizon. They have an excellent node network. It might be the best in crypto. I encourage people to research their Zendu. Again, it's Zendu. Sidechain protocol. It belongs in the conversation, quite frankly, with Ethereum and Cardano. Let's talk about boxing. Peter Fury, in an interview, made some comments that I support 100%. I want you to contrast his comments with an earlier video I did here online about the upcoming fight between Anthony Joshua and Kubrat Pulev. Right now, before I say another thing, let me just say something that needs to be said. If I came online and if I said, you know, Will Chamberlain and LeBron James really aren't good at shooting free throws, there's a group of you that would then say, hey, you're being a hater you just have some personal beef against Wilt Chamberlain or LeBron James, right? I could recognize that they're all-time players. But by pointing out accurately flaws in their game, somehow you're supposed to be a hater. Now, Anthony Joshua is a unified heavyweight champion. I'm fully aware of the fact that there probably is not another person in the sport of boxing that has his fan base, right? He's a box office king. If he were to fight the Gypsy King in the United Kingdom, right, if the Gypsy King got his British boxing license, I would expect most of the crowd to be with Anthony Joshua. The only other guy in the sport of boxing, well, there are two, that are within range of Joshua in terms of his popularity are Canelo and Manny Pacquiao. But understand, there are two groups in boxing. There's the heavyweight champ and then there's everyone else. Right? Think back to eras. People can name you heavyweight champs from the 1950s, can't they? Right? Ezra Charles, Rocky Marciano. People can name you heavyweight champs from the 1960s, can't they? Sonny Liston, Ali, Ernie Terrell. Right? You can go back and name champs, Joe Fraser in the heavyweight division. In these lighter divisions, not so much without visiting a bunch of internet websites, right? We know the big names, Ray Robinson, okay, great. Benny Leonard, okay, great, right? But if I then said, well, name me the rest of the lightweight division from Benny Leonard's era, people would struggle. Not so much with heavyweights. We even remember big-time contenders. Today, on Long Island, if Jerry Cooney, who never held a heavyweight title, 
walks into certain bars, everyone is going to know who he is. I understand Anthony Joshua is a special person in terms of box office. But as Peter Fury pointed out, right, and understand, Tyson Fury beat Vladimir Klitschko, who Joshua models his game after. Understand, Kubrat Pulev beat Yui Fury, a member of the Fury family. Right, the Fury family has seen the fight styles firsthand of both fighters. Well, let me just say this. Peter Fury made the point that the Kubrat Pulev fight is a very difficult fight for Joshua. Right, Pulev has one of the best jabs in the game, certainly in the heavyweight division. The way Fury put it in the interview, and the interviews at BoxingNews24.com, the way Fury put it, it's also on Essentially Sports, the way Fury put it was he said, look, Anthony Joshua cannot fight this fight on his back foot like he did in the second Andy Ruiz fight. Right? Let's go one step further on that. Anthony Joshua, for all the muscles, for all the height, for all the size, for all the power, he's a cautious fighter. He's not going to invade your space. He's a counterpuncher. He wants you to find him. Then he'll open up. This isn't Mike Tyson against Frank Bruno. This isn't a Mike Tyson against Marvis Fraser type guy. This isn't Lennox Lewis against Andrew Galata. This isn't Lennox Lewis against Michael Grant. Right? Anthony Joshua isn't that fighter. He's like Lennox Lewis on most nights, where Lewis let the other guy find him. Cautious fighters have problems against guys with great jabs. Understand, Vladimir Klitschko was losing his fight to Kubrat Pulev when he realized that he had to lead with power shots. So he leads with a power shot, not a jab. Doesn't try to jab his way in. Right? He decides to stalk Pulev, leads with power shots, drops Pulev. Right? The fight then unravels for Pulev. Well, understand, the problem with opening up for a cautious fighter, like a Vladimir Klitschko, who had it backfire on him in the Corey Sanders fight, who had it backfire on him in the Lehman Brewster fight. Right, when you're a cautious fighter, when you're a guy who is methodical, you're like a train on tracks. You're not the car that's off road. You're not the car that's on some dirt road and then goes off track and starts improv -ing. When you're the rock and roll drummer and not the jazz drummer, who's breaking beats, who's, you know, in the middle of the solo at the start of the solo. When you're methodical like Anthony Joshua, if you try to go off-road, if you try to do something strange like that, something outside of your comfort zone against a mandatory contender like this, you're going to open yourself up for counters and other problems. In other words, <clears throat> When Vladimir Klitschko led with a power shot, he had to make sure 
that he caught Kubrat Pulev. Because had he not, he would have been overextended. And Pulev could have riddled him with jabs. Understand, I know for many the jab's an appetizer. For certain fighters, Larry Holmes, Carlos Monzon, Kubrat Pulev, the jab is his big punch. Right? Guys who jab are into distance. They know the distance. They're accustomed to guys trying to lunge in to close that distance. If Anthony Joshua takes several rounds to lunge in, and we've seen him start slow in numerous fights, look at the Alexander Povetkin fight. Right? If Anthony Joshua spends the first few rounds cautious, trying to figure out the lay of the land, right, on his back foot or just standing stationary, watching Kubrat Pulev, he's going to lose those early rounds. Let's say he enters the ring with a two-round advantage. Why? Because that's the advantage that popular fighters like a Canelo and a Manny Pacquiao have. Let's be real. I know it's not official, unofficial. You've watched enough Austin Trout, Canelo fights to know that Canelo seemed to have an advantage on the scoring. Right? You saw Cotto Canelo. You thought, oh, this fight's close. Then they hit the scorecards and, oh, the fight's not that close. And you're wondering, how's that possible? Right? Well, you have the same thing going on with Anthony Joshua, don't you? Right? The scoring in that Joseph Parker fight, questionable. Understand, that fight's interesting because the referee wouldn't allow Parker to go inside and go to the body. If you have a fair ref here, given that Joshua does not move remotely as well, as Yui Fury, right, doesn't have Fury's legs, isn't a mover like Fury, he's a power puncher, he's a counter puncher, right, understand, he's going to have to do something, he's going to have to try to lunge at Kubrat Pulev, he's going to have to get his train off its tracks, right, he's going to have to get off road at some point. To go after Kubrat Pulev. Because if he fights his normal style and is cautious, waiting for openings, he might not find any for 12 rounds. Understand, you're watching a child of the Larry Holmes era. I saw many Larry Holmes fights where Larry Holmes had that jab popping and you understood. If something here does not materially change, Larry's going to win this fight easily. The other guy's just getting battered, staying on the outside. Now, Pulev has lost one fight in his entire career. It's that Vladimir Klitschko fight. And when you look at that fight, let's just say Klitschko is out of character. What Peter Fury is telling you is that to win this fight, Anthony Joshua, the counterpuncher, is going to have to get out of character. He can't stand there and wait for Kubrat Pulev to come to him so he could counter the shots. Because Pulev, as a jabber, can operate from the outer lip of the pocket. Right? He's throwing jabs. He's fully extending his arms. Good jabbers know to lean a little bit. So they're far away from you, but when they throw the jab, that jab is covering real estate. Pulev should win the slow rounds. If Anthony Joshua is uninspired and is on his back foot, like Vladimir Klitschko was against Tyson Fury. There's going to come a time in the fight where people are going to say, you know what, unless this champ 
shifts it into gear, he's going to lose this fight. Vladimir Klitschko against Tyson Fury never shifts it into gear until the 12th round of that fight. By then, he needed a knockout to save his title. What Peter Fury is telling you is that Anthony Joshua is going to have to try to open up. And that's not who he is. Let's remember, Kubrat Pulev stops Alexander Ustinov. Right stops him. Fighters on the outside, and I would argue Ustinov has much better legs than Anthony Joshua. Right? I expect Joshua to win because I'm expecting Joshua to be a bit more active. He has to redeem his name. He lost two fights ago by stoppage in a fight where he hits the canvas multiple times. I'm guessing he wants to remind us of who he is. That second Andy Ruiz fight is viewed in large part as Andy Ruiz coming in out of shape. Right? Understand, in that fight, what Peter Fury is telling you is that Joshua relied on a foot speed gap between himself and Ruiz and was able to win that fight on his back foot moving behind a jab. He can't do that against Kubrat Pulev. If this turns into a jabbing contest, Pulev has the superior jab. Folks, that's his game. Right, so this is a tough fight. It's not an easy fight. It's a tough fight. The value side of the play, betting-wise, is with Pulev, right? I think all of us want to see Joshua against Fury ultimately, right? That's what we want to see. We want to know. It's a travesty, travesty, that you have two guys from the same part of the world who've been in the limelight, in the heavyweight division for years, right? How many years has it been since Fury first became heavyweight champion? Beating Vladimir Klitschko. It'd be a travesty if the two guys didn't fight. Right? Let's face it. So I believe most boxing fans want Joshua to win this fight against Pulev so that we get the fight against Tyson Fury. In my mind, Tyson Fury beats Deontay Wilder in their third fight. But these are when the upsets happen, folks. Kubrat Pulev is an older fighter. He understands. He doesn't have many more chances left. He understands he's fighting a guy who's a bit unsettled, who has a record of one and one in his last two fights and in the fights before that was being tested by Alexander Povetkin before he got the stoppage. Right? Let's be real. The Joseph Parker fight I mentioned earlier in, in Joshua's backyard goes the distance. Right? Goes the distance. Even Carlos Taco was hanging around in his fight against Anthony Joshua. So Kubrat Pulev sees this. Pulev has been around long enough to have seen people like Vladimir Klitschko when Klitschko was champion. Right? He's not going to be easily impressed. He hasn't been 21 for the last 18 years. So he's seen champions. He knows this champion is vulnerable to a good jab. Right? Pulev's not going to try to collapse the pocket, folks. 
He's going to try to have slow rounds. He's going to try to beat this guy methodically. It's going to be, in a way, kind of like Tyson Fury's game plan against Vladimir Klitschko, where Fury wasn't there to knock out Klitschko. He was there to outbox Klitschko for 12 rounds. And as he was outboxing Klitschko, the Klitschko corner started to realize that they were about to lose their title, hence the 12th round. Right here, Joshua's going to have to take chances. How did that work out for him in the third round of the first Andy Ruiz fight? Let me say this. Joshua does have a punch, a power punch, that he can lead with. Fifth round, his fight against Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Revisit that. You're going to notice Joshua is throwing a left hook. He's coming after Klitschko. Right? He's throwing a left hook. He's trying to end the fight. He drops Klitschko. Klitschko gets up. Joshua starts binging on left hooks. You notice it's a great punch. It's one of boxing's better left hooks. Joshua can throw it suddenly. Here's what happened. Klitschko, a vet, gets off the canvas, starts seeing the left hook fast, is able to avoid most of them. So then you get to the sixth round, and Joshua, who's just overextended himself, throwing power punches in a manner that's out of character for him, right? Joshua wants to be stalked. He doesn't want to be the stalker. Right? He wants Alexander Povetkin to jump in the pocket so Joshua can catch him with short punches. Then, when you're woozy, Joshua comes after you. Well, Joshua thought Vladimir Klitschko was woozy. Went on a left hook bench. In the sixth round, he gets dropped. When he gets off the canvas, he looks like he has nothing left. Right? He survives the sixth round. Understand, though. One of the reasons why he's bone tired in the sixth round, at the start of the sixth round, one of the reasons why his coordination's a little off in that sixth round is because he was out of character trying to end the fight in the fifth round. Now I'm guessing Kubrat Pulev knows the film of Joshua Klitschko better than I do. He should. He boxes for a living and he should realize, okay, what power shot does Joshua, a cautious fighter, have the confidence to lead with from distance? Right? I'm guessing Kubrat Pulev is fully aware of that left hook. I don't think Joshua is the kind of guy who has the confidence to lead with a straight right hand from distance against a mandatory contender. This is a tough fight. It's much better than advertised. Right? I think youth wins this fight for Anthony Joshua. Youth in power. But I'm expecting him to get tested. If he doesn't get off his back foot in the first four rounds, folks, you're going to be looking at a desperate Joshua later in the fight. Just like you were looking at a desperate Ustinov against Kubrat Pulev. And understand, that's what jabbers want. They want you to start getting desperate. Then the accuracy of their jab and their ability to throw it on the move starts to decimate the opponent. Look at the ending rounds of Larry Holmes against Jerry Cooney from years ago. Right? Kubrat Pulev has an excellent jab, in my opinion, this fight against Anthony Joshua. And we're all assuming, certainly the bookmakers are assuming, it's a foregone conclusion that Joshua wins this fight. Right? I think there are going to be moments in this fight where we're going to wonder whether Joshua is going to win it. Right? I think this is what Pulev has been waiting for. 
I think Pulev understands he'd have a harder time against Tyson Fury because Tyson's mobile. Right? You know, Tyson's going to be moving around the ring and stuff like that. Also, Tyson can lead. When Tyson wants to lead, Tyson can turn into a lead puncher. Look at the Steve Cunningham fight where Tyson's in trouble and has to right the ship. Right here you have a vet. It's a bad mix. A good jab against a cautious counterpuncher. That's difficult for the counterpuncher because unless Joshua tries to impose his height and strength and youth on Kubrat Pulev, he's going to find Pulev is too far away for him to land shots on. And if he starts throwing power punches and misses, like he does in the fifth round, post-knockdown of the Vladimir Klitschko fight, he could tire himself out. Let me just say this. He looked bone-tired to me in the sixth round against Klitschko. He looked bone-tired to me in the seventh round of the first Andy Ruiz fight. Right? Jabbers tire you out. You remember Sonny Liston giving up his title, sitting down on his stool, right? I believe power punchers who, you know, understand that they can't catch up with jabbers, start getting desperate, start making mistakes. Look at how tired Jerry Cooney is at the end of that Larry Holmes fight, right? I believe Kubrat Pulev has the skill level to frustrate Anthony Joshua. This is a tough fight. It's not an easy fight. The reason for the fight happening is not because Joshua decided he wanted to expose himself to Kubrat Pulev's fight style. No, it's because Kubrat Pulev is the mandatory. This is the burden of carrying multiple belts. Again, that Peter Fury article is up at BoxingNews24.com. I do hope you give it a look. It's one of the better boxing articles I've come across. In it, Fury discusses the fight styles. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.